welcome back to Susan Dawn at Spiritual Connections. Welcome to a brand new Sacred Union Energy Update. Let's talk about these energies. Holy smokes. So for me, it began two days ago. I started feeling extremely deflated, just very flat, uh, very uh, internal, wanting to go internal rather than um, anything in the world. Um, even though I've been taking care of myself, even though I've been going out, even though I've been socializing a lot, there's been this internal process that has been happening. And as you know, that's kind of been the case. We've been going back and forth with that over the past six months. Um, it turns out we're going through another cycle of that now. And it's no coincidence because we are in the Lion's Gate corridor. This Lion's Gate corridor is clearing out, especially with this new moon coming up, clearing out anything that we can't take with us beyond that portal. So the Lion's Gate, it is this energetic gateway that enhances the energies, brings in new light codes on the planet. And as new light codes are coming in, you're receiving an upgrade. And as those, those light codes are coming in and you're receiving that upgrade, what's actually happening is you're clearing out anything that doesn't serve anymore any of those old templates any of those old paradigms any of those old beliefs they might make you feel a little bit crazy right now um what they're showing me is a glass of water and it's almost like so you are that glass of water right that pure clear energy that is who you are that is your natural template and what happens is that glass of water becomes muddied by false beliefs old beliefs societal programming upbringing experiences trauma etc right so what happens is the light codes come down, come through, and it's almost like pouring fresh water into that glass. And what happens is that muddied water becomes diluted. It clears out. That's what we're doing in our ascension journey. We're clearing out that muddied water, what I like to call that soul sludge. We're clearing all of that out. This is an especially powerful time. And so, like I said, it make, might make you feel a little bit crazy. It might make you feel a bit off balance. It might make you feel a little bit wibbly wobbly. Uh, for myself, there's been a lot of sleeping. I can feel um, the shift within my physical body, uh, not just with uh, deeper sleep, uh, with dream activations, uh, but also with regards to almost like a... a an, up, an upgrade, not just within my energy system, within my body. Uh, you might have what we call ascension flu. Do make sure that you are um, speaking with your doctor or your practitioner to make sure that you know you're having your physical basis covered, especially if you're having symptoms, physical symptoms. Um, you might have, for example, swollen lymph nodes, you might have sore throat, you might have headaches, things like that. Make sure that you're always checking in with your doctor, uh, your physical doctor, your medical doctor. That's the word. That's the term for it. Make sure that you're always checking in so that, you know, there's nothing hidden. But a lot of this is energetic upgrades that we're receiving and our body is going through the shift. Our body is going through that upgrade. Um, so the energy might feel a bit heavy right now, but it's because it's clearing out any of the old energy. Um, and a lot of the, the, the toxic energy, so we call it, in medical terminology, we call it toxins, right? And the body is ridding itself of the toxins. So you're, you're detoxing, essentially. Well, it's the same thing that's happening energetically. You're detoxing. Um, I have felt like I'm very uncertain in myself. I have felt very unbalanced within myself, very disconnected from myself, which is extremely unusual for me, especially at this point in my journey. Um, and so I kept asking God, going directly to source, kept asking God, what is going on? Please help me. What is it that I need to do? And I kept hearing the phrase, you already know what to do. And so that was God's instruction to keep turning back within myself, to not looking externally for a solution, to not look externally for a source, but to find that source, to find God, essentially, within myself. Because that is where the universe, that's where God's source exists, within you, as part of you, always. There is no separation. And so... I sat with myself for a while. It, it was literally like I was numbed out. It was literally like all I could do was sleep or stare straight ahead. I spent so much time outside just for a couple of hours just staring into the backyard. 
and just allowing the breeze to wash over me and listening to the water and listening to the, the sounds of the birds and the trees and just being and being and being. And to be honest, it wasn't entirely peaceful because it felt like there was so much that was coming up inside of me. There was emotions that I had to allow myself to observe and acknowledge. I was not those emotions. I was not the stories attached to those emotions, but I had to acknowledge that old version of myself that was coming up to be freed, that was coming up to be released. And it's a process that is going to be ongoing through this portal. Um, and so it wasn't entirely peaceful it wasn't even entirely comfortable, but I allowed myself to just witness it, observe it without that judgment of myself. And so old energies of victim consciousness were coming up, old energies of comparison were coming up, old energies of, of people pleasing were coming up. And with each scenario, each emotion, I just allowed myself to bear witness to it, recognizing this is not real this old belief, this old template is not real. And coming back to recognizing who I truly am, recognizing and choosing that new and higher version of myself, it was a very, very interesting process. So don't allow yourself to observe and witness whatever it is that you're experiencing, but you do not have to attach to it and you do not have to seek outside of yourself for it. So what I did was I kept going back to the basics. What is it that I need? God said, I already know what to do. What is it that I need? And what it is, is I needed to just allow myself to surrender to it. I, instead of pushing myself as I would have in the past, I allowed myself to spend some time taking a nap or spend some time outdoors with myself or spend some time just zoning out, doing whatever it is that I needed, whatever it was that my body, my mental capacity needed. Because there's so much that's happening beneath the surface. There's so much that's happening energetically. The thing was is that I felt very disconnected from what was happening energetically. Usually I'm very in tune with both my body and my energy, but I felt very disconnected. And so what I did was I went to hug a tree in the backyard. And as soon as I put my arms around it and I pressed my cheek against the bark, I felt this wave of energy wash over me, grounding me loving me, this warmth of the earth, the warmth of nature, it was a gift from the tree. And I just started crying and allowed myself to release whatever it needed to release to that tree. And that was the gift of that tree consciousness that that tree consciousness gave me. And so I walked a little bit barefoot in the grass for some time. It had started to rain. I, I stood in the rain for a little bit and let it wash over me. And then I felt steady enough, stable enough to be able to do this reading. And so what's coming forth, what's channeling is this pure energy of acknowledgement, is this pure energy of guidance and support that is helping me even now because I'm going through this with you guys. I've always said that I'm on this journey with you. Um, what's interesting is I spent most of the past two weeks really in a hyper masculine, hyper focused mode because I have been doing a lot of work here at Susan Dawn Spiritual Connections behind the scenes. You might not see um, or notice a whole lot of changes. They're very subtle, uh, but they're laying the foundation for the next evolution of Susan Dawn Spiritual Connections because it's the next evolution of myself. Uh, if you've been with me since the very beginning, almost seven years ago, then you see how we have evolved. And it's because I've evolved as a person and our community has evolved along with me, along with us. And so as my as I evolve, my business evolves because my business is a natural extension of myself and of my journey. And so I've been putting these things into place, putting these things into practice. You might notice it in the thumbnails that we have, in the playlists that we have now. Um, everything is very organized. Everything is very concise and fresh. Um, and that was the foundation I wanted as we go into this next iteration of this journey. Um, and so I have been very hyper-focused in that energy, very dedicated, very intentional in what I've been creating and building and doing behind the scenes for this next version. And I'll have more announcements coming up uh, through the course of August as we prepare to launch in September. Um, and I'm very excited for what is to come. It is uh, going deeper in support of the Sacred Union Path of Ascension, of the Soul Path journey, 
uh, whichever track you're on, whichever resonates most with you, is going to go even deeper than we've ever been. And I'm very excited to be bringing that new programs and and um, offerings to the for to the to the fold. Um, but like I said, I was very much in that hyper awareness, and once I came out of that, I allowed myself back into my feminine energy, allowed myself to relax and receive. I was like, I opened up that door for these upgrades, opened up that door for this release of old energy in order for the new to come in. And like I said, it's no coincidence that we're in this Lionsgate corridor because the Lionsgate energy enhances and amplifies everything that you're becoming, everything that you're creating, everything that you're manifesting. The Lionsgate is a powerful portal of infinite limitlessness is what they're saying infinite limitlessness going beyond what you thought you were capable of going beyond who you thought you were going on beyond your perceived limitations so we have a new moon on sunday and i did not know when i scheduled my lionsgate sacred integration workshop on sunday that it was going to be a new moon i was not aware of that it was a new moon kind of out of the loop with the moon cycles right now um, and some cosmic stuff. There's a lot happening cosmically, astrologically in August, which is also playing a part in these energies. But remember, it's all astrological support. And we're going to be doing more readings, some more cosmic channelings um, about these astrological support transits that's helping us in our ascension, that's helping us a longer journey. Um, but I was not aware it was a new moon. I just discovered that this week. Um, but it's no coincidence. Nothing's a coincidence, right? So I hope that you'll join me for our Lionsgate integration workshop. We're going to be doing either a meditation or a light language transmission, whatever it is that comes through. We're going to be channeling about the Lionsgate energy, uh, Lionsgate codes, uh, the meaning of it how it's manifesting in our journeys, whether it's sacred union or ascension, for your individual journey and for the collective as a whole, the greater collective, the global collective as a whole, what that means going forward. And we're also going to be connecting with that Lyran energy as we've done for many years in the past, bringing in those Lyran light codes and anchoring that in, anchoring this energy in. So we've been going through these upgrades, we've been getting these light codes, we're gonna be working on anchoring in that crystalline consciousness that is coming through to the planet right now so if you are wanting to join us you can feel free to check out the link in the description box to register if you're not able to join for the live event there will be a replay available um, additionally if you are unable to join the live stream make sure that you are signing up anyway because we also have a replay package so what I do after each workshop is I actually you'll have access to the original workshop where we have a chat and everything um, but then what I do is I actually edit the video for the most important information um, so that's accessible to everyone and I package it with light language transmissions or other channelings that might be prominent or relevant to that particular subject. Um, and then that will be available at a little bit of a higher price because it is a package, but that will be available as well. But if you sign up for the event, for the live event, then you will get that package replay for free. Um, but it will be available later on for purchase as well if you're unable to uh, join or you want to join at a later date. Okay, so interesting energies. Um, let's see how this is affecting counterparts. Remember to take these readings for your own inner masculine and feminine, for your counterpart to understand what your counterpart might be experiencing on the journey, or for uh, the global ascension as a whole because everything is interconnected. Let's see what's going on for the divine masculine at the moment. What's going on for the divine masculine? fulfillment there feels like there's a little bit of a lack here it's interesting I started with the deck turned upside down and that's actually what this feels like it feels like there's a lack it feels like there's a yearning for that fulfillment it feels like they can see um, 
the bigger picture now it feels like they can see and have those desires and have those wants for their fulfillment they know what their dreams are they know uh, what's possible but it's almost like there's still this kind of lack of consciousness remember when I said that there's some victim consciousness that's going on right now that's what it feels like it feels like there's kind of this pull into lower energy right now um, we've talked about this in the past how twin flame sacred partner sacred union energy is so potent it is so powerful because it carries the Christ consciousness template, the, the Christ Sophia template. It is the balance, a pure balance of the masculine and the feminine energies in harmony with God's source. It's that Trinity energy. And the masculine and the feminine energy give birth to an unconditional love. You naturally have that unconditional love for each other, but it creates a third energy. It creates a Trinity energy. And what happens is that energy actually births worlds, births new universes births new collective consciousnesses that's the ripple effect that you have if you want to go deeper into that you can check out the sacred channelings here on the youtube the playlist or you can check out my book the unity code where we go deep into all things twin flames and all of my teachings but we've been channeling about this for many many years now what happened a couple of years ago is for those who were on track with regards to their sacred union and when I'm talking about sacred union I'm not talking about oh we're in a relationship we're committed we're having a family we're getting married etc etc that's the expression of the energy that is your human story but there's so much more to the twin flame connection to the twin flame energy and it is an energy there's so much more that's just the the icing on the cake so to speak there's so much more depth to what twin flame actually is if you're still looking at it as just a relationship or just a connection or just a a, a romance then you're missing half of the story and and i don't mean to be so emphatic and so tough love there um but we're at a point in our journey, we're at a point in our ascension where that has to be understood. There is so much perversion, there is so much corruption in this community when understanding what Twin Flames is. It is not what it is made out to be. It is not a soulmate connection. It is not just a romantic partnership or a relationship or we're going to get married, etc. Those things are beautiful. Those are beautiful desires and experiences to want and experiences to have. And you're meant to have those pleasurable experiences experiences in your life as a human but it goes beyond that that is not the crux and the heart of what these connections are all about these these connections are catalysts and activations for your growth and that growth what is that it is unconditional love understanding what unconditional love actually is unconditional love we we tend to not truly understand what unconditional love is we say there's unconditional love but there's usually some kind of manipulation or control or some kind of condition that is placed upon it right unconditional love is that god source love is that pure love and it is so simple when it comes down to it but we as humans we tend to make it so complicated and when i say these things these things remember I'm not saying them with judgment there's no judgment here because we've all been there sometimes we're still there right this is a journey of growth this is an evolution this is a process that we're all undergoing so there's no judgment whatsoever it's just emphatic because we tend to forget what the journey really is about so this journey everything has a ripple effect everything has a, a, a more than meets the eye kind of energy right but the sacred unions moving into that unconditional love moving into that harmony moving into that peace that had gotten very hijacked especially for for i'm, I'm talking about um I hate to use this term, but, but those who are truly on that sacred union path of ascension, those who are truly connecting with the twin flame template and not just, again, the romantic connection, not just looking at it as a romantic partnership. There's nothing wrong with having that desire, but we have to pull back from thinking that that's all it is. From We have to redefine union as, oh, it's just a romantic connection or we can't just say, oh, I am married to my partner or I'm committed in a committed relationship with my partner and assume that that's union. That's not union. That is a union or maybe a step of union, but union is energetic. 
Union is energetic. Union is experienced first energetically, and then it might be expressed in the physical realms. So just be very careful with, um, and use your discernment, use your intuition, trust your intuition when it comes to what is portrayed, especially in the spiritual community, especially in the twin flame community. We are kind of um, separate from the twin flame community, so to speak, um, in that I don't, I don't watch any twin flame readings. I don't, um, I don't participate in anything with the twin flame community um, because I have found over my journey that it has been so corrupted. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from watching and understanding that to trust my own intuition and to trust my own channelings, um, but it took my own discernment. So just use your discernment and use your own intuition um, when it comes to what you see, when it comes to what you read, when it comes to what you consume, okay? So the energies had been hijacked and many got off track, myself included, uh, my, my connection included, I should say, got very much off track. There were a lot of psychic attacks. There was a lot of darkness that came in to these connections. Um, this was around 2021, 2022 where there was, uh, everything became sidelined. I call it hijacking. It felt like these connections were hijacked. Um, and last year we channeled a phrase called the sacred union reset. And I'll put some links um, in the description box as well uh, for you to refer to. We channeled that things were coming back online, that these sacred unions were becoming reset. And I wanted to give a shout out to a channel that I do watch, not every video, of course, but the ones that I'm called to, um, Amanda Ellis is a very high level spiritual teacher who talks about twin flames occasionally in the way that, that it should be. I don't want to say it as it should be in, in that way, but in, in from a high level perspective. Um, and I very much appreciate her because she approaches it from the perspective of energy. We had channeled years and years ago that Twin Flame is an energy, and she approaches it from that perspective as well. And what's interesting is she just created a video called The, the uh, Twin Flame Reset, and it's validating because we had channeled that same thing last September, that these sacred unions, these Twin Flames, were coming back online and that's what's happening. It feels like there is a, a movement. That's what it feels like. It feels like a movement um, that is bringing Twin Flames back together. Um, that is bringing the energies back together. Now remember, Twin Flame is an energy. So it could be the same person that you had known in the past or it could be somebody different who was carrying that Twin Flame template or that Twin Flame energy. Be open. Trust your intuition. Don't be attached to a specific scenario, to a specific person, to a specific expectation. You know in your heart what is true for you. I will always say that. You know in your heart. No guide, guru, teacher, psychic can ever tell you what you know is true for you. But that's a journey that you have to take for yourself. So allow yourself to be open to that new twin flame template and also know that you write your story. You yourself, that is your power. That is your creative ability. You write your story. Nobody has the blueprint, nobody. People can say that they have a blueprint but they don't have your blueprint, they have theirs. People can serve as guides. People can facilitate and help to navigate your journey. That is essentially our job as guides. That is our job as, as healers to help facilitate healing, to help facilitate and, and help navigate people's journeys. But you are the creator of your reality. You are the writer of your story. You write your own twin flame template. There can be an overall general looking blueprint, but you write your specific story. Nobody can tell you that but yourself. So there is a shift that is occurring to bring connections back together again. And I feel like the Divine Masculine is feeling that. They're desiring that fulfillment. They're desiring that dream. They're desiring that, that connection because they understand what the lack is. And that's where we're coming back to, it feels like there's this victim consciousnesses. 
uh, this, how do I say this? If it's victim consciousness in the energy field, it's because they are now aware of that victim consciousness. They might not have the words for it, but they're aware of what it is to experience lack and scarcity versus experiencing abundance. abundance. And a lot of them are actually comparing their life with you versus their life without you is what I'm hearing. So for those of you who might not be in contact, or who might be in what we call separation, um, who might not have communication, or who might not be in a, how do I say this, um, a completely fulfilling connection, maybe you're communicating but it's not completely fulfilling or it's not completely um, harmonious or whatever, um, there is a level of understanding of what it's like to be in that communication, in energy with each other, in that peace, in that harmony together, and what it is to be in that lack. They're understanding that now, and they're recognizing that they're not entirely fulfilled. They're not fulfilled without you. They're not fulfilled without this connection. And remember that your twin flame is you. It is you experienced in another physical body, another personality, yes. They have their own personality. That's why it's often a union of opposites. But the energy is you. And so they're beginning to recognize where they were not loving themselves, where they were not connecting with themselves, where they were not at one with themselves or feeling whole within themselves. That's where the lack actually came from. That's where the scarcity actually came from. That's where the victim consciousness actually came from. And so there's now a shift to desiring that wholeness within themselves. And the wholeness doesn't come from being in connection with you. The wholeness comes from themselves. But the more that they're connecting to themselves, the more that desire is there to connect with you. So it's not seeking outside of yourself or not seeking outside of themselves for anything. It's recognizing the wholeness within yourself or themselves, whoever we're talking about here. Just in general, it's recognizing wholeness within yourself, not seeking outside of yourself for anything external. You have that within yourself. But the more that you connect with yourself, the more you recognize that love in the other or with the other. Okay, does that make sense? We can talk more about that um, in other readings or you can check out my book, The Unity Code. So let's, um, interesting energies. There's a, a, a huge shift that's coming in and I feel like it's the Lionsgate energy that is creating that shift. Um, again, clearing out anything of the past, clearing out anything that doesn't serve old versions. There's a consciousness shift that is occurring for both counterparts, for everybody, truly. Um, but I feel like that's what this feels like. It feels like, and I'm also getting, um, before I say that, this peach on the vine, the peach is like this juicy, um, this juicy fruit, right? It's this, this nectar kind of energy, the sustaining kind of energy. It's um, fresh, it is, um, it's healthy. And that's what this energy feels like. It feels like where they were realizing where they were not healthy, where they were realizing their, their vines had been empty, so to speak, where they were realizing they were in this lack energy. And now they're realizing that they have had everything in their life. They have had everything they've ever wanted, everything they've ever needed. And they're recognizing where their fulfillment actually is. And rather than chasing money or toxic relationships or abstract whatever, rather than chasing things that are of a lower energy, they're shifting higher. They're, they're shifting their consciousness to recognize what actually fulfills them what actually lights them up. They're following that path now, or they're beginning to. Really interesting. Okay, tell me what's going on for the Divine Feminine, please. Tell me what's going on for the Divine Feminine. Truth. Divine Feminines, this is what you have been through. You see how the tree, there's like a stormy weather, the tree feels like it's being pushed and pulled, it's blowing. Um, that's what it feels like. It feels like you have been going through it. It's been wibbly wobbly. There's been some stormy weather, but your roots, this is your faith. Your roots are so anchored in there that you're not going anywhere. There's a face in here. You might not be able to see it on the, on the screen, but there's a face here. And this feels like, um, 
fairly intimidating actually it feels very fairly threatening it feels like that's kind of like that hijacking energy it feels like there's a, a lower kind of energy um old energy that is trying to maybe get you off your course and that might have been a little bit of what you felt as well disconnected from yourself very off within yourself but again all you have to do is connect to your root all you have to do is connect within yourself remember god said you know the way you know what to do you connect with yourself so even though the the, the storm might be strong and this feels more like an internal storm versus a physical manifestation. Uh, it could be manifesting physically. There could be some upsets and tower moments in your life, etc. But remember, you have the ability to get through it. Your journey has taken you to such a place that you are anchored in. You're anchored in. You're rooted in. I'm going to show you guys this because they're calling me to. I created a... Um, an image here in the book this is God's source these are the roots you have all of these illusions separation is illusion worth is an illusion lack is an illusion control is an illusion abandonment is illusion all these wounds that might come up and rear its head all this old energy but what stays true what's rooted in that faith in that truth is God's source there is no separation there is no disconnect you're always connected, even if it feels like there is a disconnect. So keep anchoring in to your faith. Keep anchoring in to what you know is true. And if you're questioning what is true, spend some time with yourself. Spend some time removing yourself from anything that's creating those toxic energies or those storm clouds. Uh, for me, I had to pull back from social media because there was so much um, negativity that I was seeing that it was really affecting my mental health and so over the over the summer i have really pulled back from social media and been connecting with my truth with myself and that's been monumental for me so keep anchoring in because that's where your faith is your faith is rooted in so that it can't be swayed you know the the branches might sway you might lose a couple leaves but the tree's not going anywhere you cannot be uprooted, um, not at this point on your ascension journey. You are firm. You are firm in who you are, in who you're becoming, in your journey. You know what to do. If you need to, go back to the basics. Go back to the basics of your spirituality. Go back to the roots of your journey. Go back to the basics. Keep going back to the basics. Go back to the basics of your practice. If it is a tarot practice that helps you connect and hone it to your intuition, go back to that practice. If it's meditation, if it is going for walks, if it and, and connecting with nature, go back to the basics. That's going to help you stay rooted in. Okay? Let's see what's going on for the union energies between the two. What's going on for the union energies between the two? Flow. I do feel if you can, oh yeah, I love new beginnings too. If you remove the illusion, especially you divine feminines, if you remove the illusion of what you're seeing with your physical eyes and tune in with your heart space, which is one of the core tenets of this journey, connecting with the energy underneath and not looking at everything and taking everything at face value, if you connect with the energy, you will feel the flow of your connection you will feel the flow of love between the two of you that came through in a previous sacred union energy update i can't remember which one if you guys remember which one um please do me a favor and let me know in the comments so i can link it but i know that came through in a recent sacred union energy update where the energy is flowing between you guys even if there's no communication even if it looks like there's separation there is this is an energetic exchange first and foremost it is an energetic experience Stop looking at the physical as a barometer for what is happening. Stop looking for the data. Stop looking for the evidence. Trust. That's where you have faith. That's where you trust. Right? It, everything happens from the inside out. New beginnings on horizon. Uh, very much this Leo energy here, this August energy, this Lionsgate energy here. I do feel like there's there's going to be movement uh, with these connections. Now, movement with these connections does not have to be physical. 
Again, this is an energetic connection. Stop looking at the evidence. Stop looking at the physical as the be all end all. Keep tuning into the energy that will reflect in your physical reality. You know, it will reflect in your own journey as well. So rather than looking at what's he doing or what she experiencing or when's there going to be contact, tune into the energy because that's where the movement happens and then it reflects physically. Okay, so keep tuning into that because there are there there are shifts and there are changes that are happening, and we'll tune into that in some sacred channelings coming up, some in-depth readings coming up, uh, potentially even with the Lionsgate um, workshop. I'm going to look into uh, how the Lionsgate is actually uh, contributing to this movement and what's being created. Okay, let's see what's going on a little bit further, and I'm going to use this deck. I haven't used this one in a while. Let's see what's going on a little bit further in these connections. What's going on for the Divine Masculine currently? What's the current energy for the Divine Masculine? What's the current energy for the Divine Masculine? What's the current energy for the Divine Masculine? We have the Knight of Pentacles. Yeah, see... Slow and steady wins the race is immediately what I heard. It is this energy of movement. There is movement. You might not be seeing it because it might look subtle. You might not be seeing it all at all. We had channeled that there's like this veil uh, between the two of you right now, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Just because you're not seeing it doesn't mean it's not happening, right? Doesn't mean that your divine masculine isn't going through their own transformation yeah this energy with the three of pentacles and the death card this three of pentacles is actually giving me eight of pentacles energy it does feel like they're working hard on themselves it feels like they are um th what i'm hearing is the word apprentice so it feels like they're going through their ascension and they're learning they might be learning with mentors they might be learning from other people through their experiences um, they might be doing counseling or have a teachers or taking classes or whatever this is. This is a very spiritual nature though. It does feel like they are, are learning. And I'm also hearing surrendering to their growth, surrendering to their learning. Um, this is somebody who had a lot of pride and a lot of ego, a lot of stubbornness. But I feel like there's a surrender to being the student, um, to being the apprentice, to learning, to growing as part of their transformation. So it might look like nothing's happening, even with this Knight of Pentacles, or it might look like there's some slow moving, some, some slow energy, some slow growth. But remember, even the smallest steps are quantum leaps. Sometimes it looks like a very small step, but energetically, it is a gigantic leap forward. So again, don't focus on the physical as a barometer for where you are in your journey. Don't focus on the physical to let you know or to compare yourself to anybody or anybody's journey or to make you think that this isn't happening or to make you think that, that you know, there's no movement or whatever. Now, detach from expectation for what you think it needs to look like. Detach from the Twin Flame story. Detach from that Twin Flame matrix. That's why in our Sacred Union Empowerment session, our workshop from a couple of weeks ago, we really honed in on exercises for reclaiming your journey, for reclaiming your joy, reclaiming your power along this journey. That's why we've been honing in on that for the past year and a half, the importance of focusing on yourself, the importance of focusing on your joy and your journey. The, the energy, you guys can hear it in my voice, it's so emphatic because that's the energy that's coming through. They are emphatic. It is go time. This is where we need to continue to evolve, and we don't evolve by focusing on somebody else and focusing on their journey. You have to have a level of trust in the masculine, and if you're not trusting in the masculine, you're not trusting in your own inner masculine. So there's a, a huge emphasis on, on shifting out of old beliefs, shifting out of the old paradigm, shifting out of the old template that was written for twin flames in the past and allowing your journey to expand you and allowing your journey to expand so for the divine masculine there is a transformation that is happening and it might look a little bit slow it might look like it's slow moving uh, but this is part of their process that they're going through they're becoming the student um, and we always go through cycles where we're the teacher and the student 
uh, where we are leveling up. I myself, back in March, I started working with a spiritual business coach. She has helped me level up and see myself in such a different light. Not that not seeing myself in a different light, but embodying that. Learning to truly embody that new version of myself. And so I became the student again. We're always going to play that role, the dual roles of student and teacher, of mentor and mentee. You know, we're, we're all things. We're never just one thing. We're all things at all times. So I feel like that's what the Divine Masculine is going through as well. Um, I wonder, There's something about this death card. Tell me more about this death card. Okay. So I felt like there was some kind of ending. It felt like there was some kind of conclusion. So I wanted to get a little bit more. Ending that devil energy. Ending that toxicity. What I'm also ha hearing is ending the control or the hold that that old version had on them this is their evolution this is their leveling up this is their shift in consciousness anything that was holding them back from themselves their true version of themselves anything that was keeping them in lack and victim consciousness that's devil energy that's that toxic energy that's what's coming to a close that's what's coming to a conclusion that's what they're transforming they're seeing themselves differently and they're ending this toxic energy what i'm hearing is they're breaking the chains of the past and that comes from within the self. It doesn't come outside of the self. It comes within the self. And that can play out in a number of different ways. For some, there are some masculines, there might be um, issues with money. Maybe there's a lack with money, a scarcity with money. You never have enough money. Um, money has control over them in some way, shape, or form. Um, whatever that is. There, there's something materially, there's something with money. For others it's addictions, for others it's toxic relationships. Whatever that specific scenario, the chains are being broken because that comes from a shift. It comes from a shift in consciousness, it comes from a humbling, it comes from a recognition of the self. I don't want to stay here is what I'm hearing. I don't want to stay in that lack. I don't want to stay in the victim consciousness. They're tired of it. It's old. It's old and it's not real. It's not who they are, and they recognize that. They were just playing out that part over and over and over because it was a consciousness loop, because it was a cycle. And they kept replaying the cycle over and over and over, but at some point you get sick of yourself, right? I said this in a channeling many, many years ago. There's a Brene Brown, I think it's Brene Brown quote that says, it's only when you get really tired of your bullshit that you allow true transformation to take place. That's this energy here. Channelings that we did, two years ago are coming back around because again the energy became hijacked we were on track there was transformation and all of a sudden it felt like the consciousness dropped again all of a sudden it felt like the energy was hijacked again especially it hijacked the masculines so everything serves a purpose there was a divine order in all of this divine feminines you might have experienced more growth you might have experienced more of a, a leveling up within yourself as a result of it there was a divine purpose in it so when I say that everything was hijacked um, there 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 were more opportunities for you to grow more opportunities for you to learn more opportunities for you to evolve so there was divine purpose in all of it but we're getting back on track now for counterparts to come together in that sacredness in that sacred union and that comes from both of you recognizing the wholeness within yourself that there is no lack there is no separation that those are only illusions keeping you from yourself which in essence keeps you from each other but it keeps you from yourself you're not separate from yourself so you're not separate from the other there is no other right it's just it looks outside of ourselves if we're looking outside of ourselves we call it the other but they're always part of you so I feel like that's the transformation that the counterpart is going through getting sick of that consciousness trap getting sick of the loops getting sick of the cycles something has to change they recognize that something has to change and so that's where they're becoming the student again they're learning learning about themselves maybe learning about spiritual topics maybe learning about um, you know the world in a different light there's there's more awareness coming in there's more there, there's some kind of a consciousness shift it's gonna play out in a little bit of a different way for everybody but there is more of a consciousness shift there is more of an awareness that's coming through here because they're breaking the cycles because they're breaking the chains of the past you know what to do God said right you know what to do 
the divine masculine is getting those same downloads, those same intuitive nudges, learning now to trust that, learning now to follow that. And that's where they're in alignment now or becoming in alignment with their higher heart, with their feminine energy. That's the union of the masculine and the feminine, taking that intuitive action, trusting where they're being guided and taking action on it. Divine feminines who are in your spiritual union, in your, your internal union, you already do that. You're in balance with your masculine and your feminine where you are trusting the guidance of your feminine and you are taking action as you're called to. That's in a nutshell the balance. That's in a nutshell that inner union. There's of course more nuance to that. There's more um, details to that. There's more uh, in that experience but considering what we're talking about here in the context of what we're talking about here, that is the balance, that is the inner union. Divine Masculine is beginning to really understand that and really connect with the feminine energy within them and trust the feminine energy within them. And as a result, trusting and connecting with you, Divine Feminine. Again, there's a lot that's happening energetically. You might be feeling the flow of energy between you two. You might be feeling a lot of telepathic communication. You might be feeling a lot of stuff happening in dream state. Um, all the old is falling away, especially that old cycles, the old toxic energy, uh, the triggers, the friction that might have come up in your unconscious states that's falling away because both of you have become, are becoming much more conscious, much more aware. Okay? All right, what's going on for the Divine Feminines? Yeah, truth, truth. Seven of swords is usually an energy of self-deception, self-sabotage, etc. Lately for me, it's this energy of clear, clarity, seeing clearly, seeing the truth. Um, that's what this feels like. What is the truth? Don't let your ego sabotage you. Don't let your ego and fears and that feeling of disconnect, that feeling of separation, which is all it is, it's an illusion. Don't let the illusion of separation sabotage you. Don't let it deceive you. Keep tuning into the truth. You know the truth. Keep going in the direction of that truth. Keep anchoring in. I'm going to put that there because it feels like that's what that belongs with. It feels like that's a, um, a confirmation here. Let's see what else is going on for the Divine Feminines. I'm going to use a different deck. Keep getting guided to this one. Yeah. Yeah, this one feels good. What's going on for the Divine Feminines, please? Especially about your, your journey, your masculine, where you are, where you aren't. Don't let the illusion deceive you. Don't let it sabotage you. Keep connecting within yourself. Keep connecting to that truth. Spend time with yourself. I always say to my clients, you don't have to make rash decisions. If you feel like you're in a rush to make a decision, it's more of a sign for you to pull back and slow down. You don't have to make rush, rush decisions. Spend time with yourself. There's always solutions. Always. Always solutions. And that truth will always be revealed. That clarity will always be revealed to you. Just keep connecting to yourself. Keep connecting to God for it. All right. What's going on for the Divine Feminines, please? What do we need to know in the current energies for these Divine Feminines? We have the Ten of Swords. This feels like an ending within yourself. Yeah. Queen of Pentacles and the Hermit. Remember when I said there's a very internal energy that's happening now? Uh, you might be going out. You might socializing. It's summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere. So naturally people are outside. They're doing things. They're socializing, etc. But there's still, it feels like a little sense of winter. It feels like a, a hibernation kind of energy. And I feel like it's because there's this internal process that's going on. This internal uh, evolution is what I'm hearing. This movement. And that's uh, that's being supported by the Lion's Gate. The Lion's Gate energy, again, what we channeled in the beginning is this movement, this momentum for the shift. And what is that shift? The shift is an energetic shift moving you out of an old version of yourself and into a new. And that's what this is representing. It's representing an old version of yourself that's come to a conclusion. And I'm also hearing anywhere where you had betrayed, let me put it, let me, let me see if I can get this energy articulated clearly. 
anywhere you had betrayed your true authentic self by that victim consciousness, by people pleasing, by um, being anything other than who you truly are, that's coming to a close. All of those old paradigms, all those old templates, all of those old energies, all the old ways of being that kept you from being who you truly are is fading away. And who you're becoming is that Queen of Pentacles. I love the Queen of Pentacles. I love the Pentacles energy because it is grounded. It is stable. It is secure. It is embodied. It's, it's this Empress energy, but I like the Queen of Pentacles showing up because it is this grounded, stable, embodied energy. It is who you are. You are this queen on the throne. You know who you are. You're not that old version of yourself. You're not the mistakes that you made. You're not the, the masks that you wore. You're not the old templates that you adhere to, the conditions that society put on you. This is you standing in your divine feminine template saying, I am here. I'm going to shine my light. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep going. I'm not afraid to be me. That's the groundedness. It's You see a lot of gold that she's wearing, a lot of uh, green of the heart chakra. She's very connected to herself, very strong within herself, with that solar plexus energy, very strong within herself, but very connected to her heart. She knows who she is. Any place where you were influenced by others, influenced by society, where you were brought up, thinking for myself, for example, I was brought up being the good girl. Um, and I don't bemoan that version of me. I don't negate that version of me. I don't dislike that version of me. But I know now the balance. I know now who I truly am. And it's not those old templates. There's a rebel inside me too. And I know how to, how to have her in balance. It's that energy. You don't have to be who you thought you needed to be. You only have to be who you truly are. You know what to do. You know who you are. That's what this feels like. This feels with the hermit energy. It feels like you are connecting with your true self. And that's what this year has been about for the Divine Feminine. It's about higher level embodiment. Anchoring in and integrating everything that you've always been but that you just forgot about yourself finding that truth finding your roots and what are your roots your roots take you back to god's source take you back to your own divinity within take you back to your pure essence not what anybody tells you to be not what society tells you and be not what the world holds you back from or, or how there's a lot of persecution energy and suppression energy especially for feminists especially for female feminines you are letting yourself speak you are letting your soul song sing I'm getting a lot of throat chakra activations you are holding your head high you are empowering yourself you are shining your light you are recognizing yourself as the person, as the soul, as the divine essence that you are and that you always have been. This is a reclamation of your power, a reclamation of your divinity. Powerful, powerful energy. Anything else we need to know for the divine feminines? Anything else we need to know for the divine feminines? Three of Pentacles, Four of Swords. Give yourself some time is immediately what I'm hearing. Just give yourself some time. Especially if you've been connecting with and resonating with what I was sharing in the beginning of the energies. Give yourself some time. Especially with that Four of Swords. Allow yourself to surrender to the healing, to the upgrades, to the... When I say healing, I mean to that rest period. To the... the Allowing yourself to give to yourself whatever it is that you need. Um, because the Three of Pentacles feels like that upgrade energy. Feels like you are, are, it feels like you're working with spirit as you're resting, as you're sleeping, as you're taking time to yourself. Give yourself what you need. 
because there's a lot happening in the higher realms. You're working with spirit. You're working with your guidance team. You're working with God's source. You're working with your, your angels. Whoever it is that you connect with as your guides, you're working in the spirit realm. So give yourself what you need. Allow yourself to surrender to this time of rest because there's movement even if it doesn't look like it. There's movement even uh, beneath the surface. You know, it might not look like you're doing anything but sleeping here, but there's a lot of movement that is happening, um, a lot of upgrades that are happening. So allow yourself that time to receive them. Okay? All right. Let's see how you're feeling about each other. It's been a while since you've checked in on this. How is the Divine Masculine feeling about the Divine Feminine at this time? How is Divine Masculine feeling about the Divine Feminine at this time? How is the Divine Masculine feeling about the Divine Feminine? Golly. How is the Divine Masculine feeling about the Divine Feminine? We have Patience. That's that Knight of Pentacles energy. That's that slow-moving energy. Um getting it right is what I keep hearing and I feel like this energy is so familiar I feel like we've channeled this before and I don't mean just recently I mean I feel like over the past year so if you're connecting with this energy if you're connecting with this this timeline then the the readings that we had channeled back in I feel like 2022, 2023, especially 2023, are really going to continue to resonate with you. Remember, these are all timeless readings. And so there might be messages in there that are resonating with you now, guidance that are resonating with you now. Um, so take it as it resonates for you. Go through the playlist and see what might um, call to you. And, you know, feel free to rewatch those because I feel like those timeless readings are still at play here that energy is still at play here it, it's gaining momentum so all of our readings piggyback on each other but it's a process so i feel like with this patience energy there's two things that are happening number one is this energy of being patient with the process and i feel like the divine masculine is saying to the feminine Thank you for being patient with me. This has been a process. Thank you for holding that space. Thank you for being patient with me. There is this energy of love for the feminine that's coming through, an acknowledgement of the feminine coming through, and how loving and how patient you have been. Now, patient doesn't mean putting yourself in a, in a corner and not living your life waiting for your masculine to come back. That's not what patience is. That's not what this journey is about. Again, everything we channeled about, you know, get off that merry-go-round, release yourself from that, that old twin flame template is true. Release yourself from what you think the journey needs to be. The more that you focus on your life, it's your, you're going along your path, Divine Mashlin is going along their path, it's the same path, it converges. It's just, it's, it converges into the same path. It converges into one but you have to allow for that semblance of trust rather than constantly looking at what's the masculine doing and and um basing your actions or basing your movements or basing your thoughts around that keep bringing that energy back to yourself it's all about your sacred empowerment all about reclaiming your energy all about your wholeness because it's it's one it's oneness right if you're still seeking outside of yourself, if you're still seeking externally, if you're still um, looking at it as your masculine is outside of yourself, your masculine is here, then you're not connecting with the masculine within you. You're not connecting with your counterpart within you that always exists within you. It's one energy. That's what twin flames are. They are one soul in two vessels and two experiences. So it's really about connecting within and holding that space while continuing to build create your greatest life and your counterpart will meet you there so with patience I feel like the masculine is saying thank you for holding that space thank you for being patient with me Again, it's not an energy of waiting. It's an energy of just holding that space and loving them as they go through their journey. That's what holding space is. It's just love. Thank you for loving me as I go through my journey, the masculine is saying. And I feel like this patience is, again, also this energy of, of 
I'm also hearing divine timing. It's this divine timing that's playing out. Divine timing is just alignment. That's all it is. It's just a consciousness shift. It's just alignment. Um, and allowing for you to become more in that alignment. And that's exactly what's happening for the divine masculine. So let's see what's happening for the divine feminine. What's the feminine saying for the masculine? How is she feeling about the masculine? How is the feminine feeling about the masculine? How is the feminine feeling about the masculine? I'm not surprised to see that hope and at the bottom of the deck we have fun so I feel like embrace your life have fun having fun and embracing your life and living your life does not negate the connection if you're in a place of fear that you're abandoning your counterpart by being in a place of joy then you are leaking your energy you're giving your power over to something outside of yourself right your counterpart is within you your counterpart is part of you it's not your counterpart is not outside of yourself Right? The more that you're in your joy, the more that you're creating fun and love for your life, the more that is actually creating that union energy because it's a higher energy, it's a higher consciousness. That joy is the highest frequency, the highest vibration. And the more you're in that high vibration, the more your counterpart will pick up on that and the more they will go through their ascension, the more they, they will feel that. But they too getting a, a lot of ringing in my ears hold on they too will feel that joy that will lift them up naturally right they will feel that just like you feel your your counterpart right so with the hope card I feel like it's not attaching to an expectation it's not attaching to an outcome it's just holding that space it's just holding that vibration holding that frequency of love that you have for your counterpart no matter what's being experienced, no matter what the illusion is showing you, you know you're always connected. You know that your counterpart loves you. You know that no matter how it plays out in your physical experience, the love exists within. Because the love exists energetically first. Always, always, always. It exists as energy. And that energy is always part of you. So hope it's not quite hope, it's more of an energy of faith. And what's the phrase that we use? Faith is the energy of acceptance, trust, and surrender. Beautiful. All right, I got a new deck. I stopped at my local spiritual shop that I used to work at to say hi, and I couldn't help myself. So we are going to get some guidance with the Sword of Light Oracle deck. This one. Alright. Guidance for the masculine, please. Guidance for the masculine. Guidance for the masculine, please. Step into the spotlight. You have a message that the world needs to hear. It's time to share your wisdom. Rather than stepping into the spotlight of like the world stage, the energy that I'm getting is stepping into the spotlight of their own life. That comes back to this energy of moving out of that lack, moving out of that scarcity, moving out of the victim consciousness. Recognizing what does fulfill them, recognizing what their dreams are, recognizing what makes them happy, and allowing themselves to not just dream, but to go for their dreams allowing for them to believe that it can be a reality. That's the stage that they're in right now. And I feel like that's what they're doing. They're shining a light on themselves. They're shining a light on what's possible. Keep shining that light on what is possible. Keep shining that light on what it is that you're creating. Keep shining that light, not on the lack, but on the abundance, on the fulfillment, on the happiness, on the joy. Regardless of the circumstances that surround you, Everything is an energy within you. You have that capability. You have that, that ability within you. It's not about external circumstances. It's all about the energy that you hold within. That changes everything. Divine, or divine feminine guidance. Divine feminine guidance, please. Divine 
the bottom of that bag. Increase your knowledge. Education brings opportunities. Take a course, pick up a book, or find a mentor to teach you what your soul longs to know. I almost feel like this is the masculine energy too. It's like always the student becoming the student again. But Divine Feminines, this feels along the lines of the message of go back to the basics. Go back to the basics. Pick up a book that might give you more clarity about what you're experiencing or about the next level of your journey or the next level of you. Um, tune into a course, uh, take a mentorship, whatever it is. You know, you're always being guided. So allow yourself to be guided to that next step. Allow yourself to be guided to to whatever it is that you need to bring that clarity, bring that faith back, bring that connection back to yourself. Again, you know what you need to do. You know what to do. Go back to the basics. Go back to the basics of trusting where you're being led to what you're being led, okay? I always say it's really important that we invest in ourselves. It's really important that we allow ourselves to go where we're guided. So allow yourself to go where you're guided. You're investing in your journey. And I don't mean monetarily investing. I mean your time. I mean your energy. Where you bring your awareness is an investment in and of itself, right? Where you bring your awareness, like that's important. You know, there, there's always things in this world that's trying to capture our attention or capture our energy, right? We have a, a very over-consumptive kind of society. So... Rather than leaking that energy, be very intentional about where your energy goes. That's what I mean by investing. Investing your energy, investing your time, maybe even investing your finances. Be very intentional. Go where you're guided. You can never lose when you trust your intuition, when you trust that soul nudge, when you trust where you're guided. You're guided there for a purpose. Okay? All right. Let's get... We haven't done this in a while either. Let's get some... Let's get some messages. This is going to be my conversations with counterparts deck. Message from the masculine to the feminine. Message from the masculine to the feminine. I believe in happily ever after because of you. Isn't that confirmation of this whole reading for the masculine, right? Confirmation of rather than looking at the lack, the scarcity, stuck in that victimhood, they're looking at the fulfillment. They're allowing themselves to believe. They're allowing themselves to dream. They're allowing themselves to desire rather than holding themselves back. That's what step into the spotlight is. Rather than holding yourself back, dream big and put those dreams into action. That's what's happening here. That's the process that's been beginning for them. And I feel like this is, I want the feminine to know. I want the feminine to know that that I'm connected to her. I want the feminine to know that that she's what I dream, that she's what I, that she's what fulfills me. And that's the message that we were getting earlier. It's like they recognize through the feminine, now they have that discernment, what was lack and what was fulfillment. They, they know, they're aware now. And they had to learn through the lack what was actually fulfilling to them. So if we're talking about relationships, for example, they might have had to go through to a third party relationship in order to recognize what they had with the feminine. If this was money, for example, they had to learn what it was like to lose their money in order to learn you know, that they were truly abundant regardless of how much money was in their account. It's situations like that. Everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different, but they had to learn through the lack. They didn't have to. They chose to learn through the lack in order to understand their abundance, in order to understand their fulfillment, and now they're recognizing the discernment. They have that discernment. It's interesting. You know what to do. You know what to do. Divine Feminine. We see the soul of each other. Yeah, this is that soul recognition. And this is, remember I said that no guide, no guru, no psychic, no teacher, whatever, will ever be able to tell you what your connection is, that that's something you know within yourself. That's this energy here. You know within yourself what the truth is of your connection. You don't attach to that, though. You don't attach. Um, and when I say you don't attach, I mean uh, you let the love flow. You let the love be. You let your journey unfold. You don't have to force anything. You don't have to manipulate anything. You don't have to control anything. That's not love. That's not this love. That's not this unconditional love. That's not this soul connection. That's the old paradigm. That's the old template. You allow love to flow. You feel it energetically. 
You tune into it energetically, regardless of what the physical circumstances are, that love is never wasted, that love is always part of you, that love is always there. Keep tuning into the heart space. That's where your connection exists first and foremost. Keep tuning into that. Keep tuning into the soul versus what is shown in the physical. Your counterpart might um, not have contact with you. Your counterpart might have blocked you, might have ghosted you. Your counterpart might have maybe said some shitty things about you or to you. You do not have to accept that. Let me make this very clear. You do not have to engage with that. That's what I mean. You do not have to engage with that. But the love can still exist. The love can still exist within. Don't engage if it's toxic. Don't engage if it's unhealthy. That's you reclaiming your power. That's you loving yourself and choosing yourself. And the more you love yourself, the more you choose yourself, the more everything shifts. This is a journey of you. This journey of union is a journey of you. Okay? I'm going to end with that because that's very important to understand. Your sacred union, the tagline for my book, your sacred union is the story of your evolution. Your journey of union is your journey of you. You know what to do. I'm sending you all so much love, so much light. Let me know if this resonates. Leave me a comment if it does. And I will be back later, hopefully next week, with some more readings. Lots of love, lots of light. Thank you.